Hi guys, welcome to Irish Footy Vlogs and welcome to another video of mine. It's that time of the week again. It's the team of the week in the Premier Division. If you're new around here, guys, please subscribe, like the video if you like the content and hit your bell notification button so you don't miss a video. Let's get straight into this one, guys. Now, first off, we'll start in goal, guys, and I've gone with Alan Manus, Shamrock Rovers. There were two serious contenders to take for this one. One was Manus, the other one was Brian Murphy. But I just thought McMa or McManus? Manus edged it for me this week, to be honest. He made some good saves against Dundalk when Dundalk had a number of chances actually to score in the game. They actually hit the post a number of times as well. But Manus, every now and again, I think people forget how good Alan Manus is. There's a lot of good goalkeepers in the league, by the way. Um, but right on a queue, he tends to remind people. like He made some excellent saves in this match. Put it this way, Abibi made a big mistake for the goal that one of the goals that uh, Shamrock Rovers scored. If you had Abibi in goal, in my opinion, for Shamrock Rovers and you had Manus in goal for Dundalk, I think there could be a different outcome in this game. So, um, you know, Manus, he's commanding. We know the presence he has, leadership at the back as well. Um, but for me, just, just nicks it this week ahead of Brian Murphy in Team of the Week. Right back, guys, I went for James Brown of Drotada United. Now, it was at United Park for Drotada and Finn Harps. Check out the match day vlog. I did a match day vlog for that, by the way, as well. And James Brown was just outstanding, guys. He was like Cafu. Um, honestly, I've seen him play many times, um, and he started the season really well here. But, again, he was Drotada's actually their biggest attacking threat in this game. Um... He gets forward, guys. He gets crosses into the box. Um, but he also has the energy and the stamina and the speed to get back into position. So he never really gets caught out of position. Very rarely you see him caught out of position at all. Um, obviously set up the goal in this game for Mark Doyle as well. And was a constant thorn in Finn Harp's side all afternoon. Um, I would say Dara Power was unlucky to miss out. He was very good for Waterford as well. Any other week he gets in. And in fact, if he was a left back... Uh, he probably would have got in this week, but I don't like accommodating players, guys. They have to play in the positions, generally, that they played in. So, um, they are a pair unlucky, but James Brown fully deserved. So, left-back guys have gone for Sean Cavan. Now, obviously, playing left-wing back, that's the way Rovers play, but um, a player that goes under the radar a lot of the time. Rovers have great options there. Ferrugia can play there, and even Liam Scales can play there as well. But Kavanagh against Dundalk, like, he didn't put a foot wrong. Uh, joined up with the attack whenever he could and uh, linked up with, with the midfield very well and the attacking players very well. Um, very good defensively as well. I don't think he gets enough credit for that sometimes, but I thought he dealt with a lot defensively in this game as well. And just the energy he showed for a player who had a bad injury as well um, not too long ago. The energy he shows getting up and down is 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 unbelievable. and. Um, you know, his passing ability, you rarely see him give away the ball as well. So for me, that that's the reason why Sean Kavanagh gets in this week. Now, at centre-back, guys, I went for Lee Desmond of St. Patrick's Athletic. Lee, seventh year at the club now at this stage. Um, He's definitely getting better as the years go on as well. Commanding enough presence for someone that isn't maybe the biggest physically or height-wise. He's got that commanding presence. What, what he's really good at and what he did very well in the Bohemians' win in the win against Bohemians was the fact that, um, you know, his reading of the game, he didn't make too many what you would call tackles, but he made a lot of very good interceptions. And uh, I think there was one opportunity, it might have been Ross Tierney could have been in, but Lee, Lee Desmond done well to, he saw the danger and he snuffed it out, for example. Uh, really leading, leading by example for St. Patrick's Athletic and really uh, led by example in this game. Solid as ever. Didn't put a foot wrong. Lee Desmond gets in this week. Now, centre-back number two, I've gone for John Mahan from Sligo Rovers. I thought he was at Sandin in the win against Longford. Very similar type performance, actually, to what Desmond put in against Bowles. Um, rarely beaten, but the amount of times he made interceptions and snuffed out the danger and read the danger. Uh, a lot of people look at to Gary Buckley because he got the goal in this game, but I thought Mahan overall and defensively was the stronger of the pair. Um, Everyone knows how good he is. He's He missed a lot, a lot of last year due to injury. And um, it's great to see him back and playing well. But as I said, uh, great reader of the game. Read a lot of um, 
moves that Longford were were coming with in the game and snuffed them out brilliantly. Got some tackles in as well. So um, Mahan and Desmond, I think the two that stood out for me personally this week. Now, guys, midfield for me was very difficult because a lot of players performed and a lot of players were very un- unlucky to miss out. I've gone for Chris Forrester. I think this is his second inclusion, actually, in the team of the week. I thought against Bowles. I thought the midfield of Pats, Lennon, Benson and Forrester were all very good. Again, they all work very well as a unit and are all very strong midfielders. They bossed the midfield against Bohemians. And, in fact, have bossed the midfield in pretty much all games this season, including Sean Grovers. But, um... Forrester's really come back to form. Um, I noticed it late last season as well, but you know he's got over his, his troubles a little bit, I'd imagine, and he's really focusing on his football now. Work rate and desire is really there, but his ability to find passes, switching left, switching right, um, when he gets on the ball, is close control. He can get out of tight situations. I did against Bohemians at Daly Man Park to find a man on the ball. Very difficult to mark at the moment. Um, he's gone deeper, I suppose, these days, but it really suits his game in many ways as well. Um, and I thought he controlled the game for long periods at Daly Man Park, and Bowles couldn't really get near him. Um, really good player, Forrester, but he's a player that's playing really well at the moment and uh, one of the reasons why Pats have had a good start to the season. And midfielder number two is a player that um, I've criticised from time to time, to be fair, and that's Daniel Mandrew. Um Put in a good display the last day against Dundalk. I thought he was tidy on the ball. He was looking to get on the ball. Um, he was involved in a lot of uh, triangular type passes and getting it back and just moving, keeping Shamrock Rovers moving along. Um, I suppose it helped that he came up with a fantastic, typical Danny Mandrew strike where he rifled the ball with a lot of power to the net after Graham Burke took a very clever, quick free um, from his point of view, look, it's, I always say it's up to him. Uh, we all know his temperament has been questionable, let's be honest about it. But if he can really sort himself out, you know, he can be a big player for Shamrock Rovers this season. He has the ability, he has the ability, so you want to see it and um, more often. But in this game, I thought he produced and Shamrock Rovers will be looking for him to produce as the season goes on as well. Midfielder number three, guys, have gone for Adam O'Reilly, the youngster on loan at Waterford from Preston North. And a very tidy performance from Adam. He's small in stature, but a good work rate. And as I said, just very tidy in the ball. Some of, some of my best players are midfield players. I like to see a good central midfielder. And I like people who get on the ball and make things happen. And I suppose um, in many ways this week, the three have picked are those type of players. A little bit different to each other, but they all have that kind of idea. Um, O'Reilly maybe isn't as expansive as the other two I mentioned, but as I said, kept Waterford ticking, getting on the ball in the right positions, um, you know, trying to make things happen, very tidy, doesn't really give the ball away often and didn't against uh, Derry City at the Brandywell either. And um, Waterford would be pleased because he came in with a bit of a reputation and, um, you know, looks like he might be able to get settled in now and he put in a really good performance up in Derry. A few players, actually, before I move on, guys, were very unlucky to miss out a lot of good midfield performances as well. Um, I know Rona Finn was given man the match by uh, Pat Morley, I think the commentator was, between Sherlock Rose and Dundalk. I thought he was very good as well, but didn't quite make it in for me. I didn't think he was man the match, personally. Um, as I said, Benson and Lennon were excellent for St. Patrick's Athletic as well. Uh, Deegan put in a good performance for Drodda as an example as well. So, um. Tends to happen a lot, guys. Usually hard to pick central midfield, but these are the three I went for. Left wing guys have gone for James Waite of Waterford. Now, James Waite put in a big shift against uh, Derry City. Very energetic player. Won the penalty, won a free kick that led to the goal as well. So, you know, he was very dangerous and, and Derry struggled to deal with him throughout. He actually reminds me, funnily enough, of Matty Smith. Very similar style player to Matty Smith. Uh, I can see James Wade chipping in with a few goals this season for Waterford as well. But very, very energetic display and um, a good performance from James. So he gets in this week's Team of the Week on the left wing. Now, as I mentioned before, I was at United Park for the draw at Finn Harps game. And I thought Carlos Sullivan was the pick of the bunch for Finn Harps. And he gets in at right midfield, guys. And um, scored a cracker, the half volley. 
Um, might be actually on the volley. It was a low volley, but the, the technique to keep that down and drill it into the corner was fantastic. But before that goal, he actually came close to scoring as well. Um, might have been Hugh Douglas who headed off the line for Drotta after uh, O'Sullivan struck. But um, he, he put in a great shift, basically, on the right. Worked very hard and showed his ability linking up with players, Adam Foley, for example, in the game, he linked up very well as well. So I thought he put in a good performance. It's important he stays fit for Finn Harps as well because he tends to get a few injuries. But I think uh, if you can keep him fit, he's probably arguably the most exciting player, to be fair, at Finn Harps when it comes to ball playing ability, I guess. You could argue McNamee as well. But um, in terms of beating players and things like that. So um, yeah, O'Sullivan gets in the team of the week on the right wing. Now, I've gone with because I can go with different systems every week, should I choose. I've gone with Graham Burke as striker, but more of a false nine, because he kind of plays that role in between the lines. I don't think an actual center four really stood out this week, to be honest. Hubel and Coughlin got goals, but, um, you know, I thought Graham Burke was very good for Shamrock Rovers, um, was involved in the quick free that led to Mandrew's goal, Um he gets everywhere, like, you know, he plays in that kind of position in behind, he goes into excellent positions, he he can turn up left, turn up right, and did do in this game against Dundalk, got some good crosses into the box, sometimes weren't taken advantage of, and uh, caused Dundalk serious issues actually in between the lines with his movement, his cleverness, and his ability. I actually thought he was man of the match personally, in my opinion against Dundalk, maybe they didn't give it to him because he got taken off, but I thought he was really good in this game, so elusive, so hard to mark, and he started the season very well, I don't think he scored yet, but he started the season very well, and um, he's a serious threat, and I just thought he was very good against Dundalk, so he gets in at a false nine position. So guys, that's my team of the week, I'll just have it up in the caption there, so you can recap and look at it again. Uh, again, please like the video, subscribe if you're new, and hit your bell notification button so you don't miss a video. Plenty at the last weekend of videos came out, guys. A couple of videos, fan reactions, the match day vlog, Harps and Drotada, and um, you know we've got the first uh, division review show as well, the premiere coming up as well. So uh, keep an eye on them, guys, and talk to you later. Good luck. Take it easy. Bye-bye. My Bye-bye now. Let me know, actually, in the comments, guys, as well. Um, if there's anyone I missed out who you felt played very well over the week as well. So um, that's it, guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye now.